Uh, good morning. Uh, how are you all doing out there? Are you getting your speed up? The waveform vibration of what you're experiencing being at that moment? Higher energy? I sure hope so. That's beautiful energy to experience, isn't it? Um, the title of this video really is a question. Because that's how we learn. It's through questions, huh? So this is what I put down there. Question. For all the students out there, and I'm still a student, okay, uh, is uh, who was the first teacher in the cosmos from the inception of the first star? Well, I know the answer to that, okay? The question is, is how about everybody else that is out there, okay? So for me, it's got to start with love, doesn't it? Why is that? Because love does no harm. That's why. Okay? So when you're born into this realm as a newborn, um, your first teacher when you're newborn becomes whoever is present when you were born and whoever's going to take care of you. Right? That's your first teacher. When you come in here, is your mother or your father or whoever the caretaker is of you until you get on your own feet, learn how to take care of yourself, okay? So that's important. And the reason that is important is basic logic. Who are you learning from? And who we are learning from as newborns can be measured in what? Now, if you paid attention to a lot of my videos, then the obvious answer is vibration. What is the speed at which the being who is your first teacher is experiencing who they are? How much knowledge have they gained throughout the sum of all the knowledge that they've learned throughout their entire soul's history? Because that's how it works. You start from the inception, right? In the beginning. What were you in the beginning? Which gets to original identity. Well, I know my original identity. What love is as a minimum frequency. Because there are frequencies that are far higher than that because I've experienced them. I know what it, ex the experience is like to be in living magma. Okay? To be the spirit that is in that living magma, producing through its state of consciousness, which is analog, okay? Magma that is going to cool and provide the energy in which life grows on it. Okay? That's powerful energy. That's a huge state of consciousness. Which means the higher the density, the higher the consciousness. Which means we don't hold energy captive. Instead, we're using the sum of the energy that we have available to us, which is who we are, to manifest life in a planet ship. That's the girl in the planet. That's how it makes it real easy for a higher hyperdimensional being that comes into a lower realm, a lower dimension, which are used as classrooms in which to discern who the being is that is presenting the information. What is the information that they are presenting and what does it mean when we are, how do I put this, qualifying and measuring a psychic timeline. So it's easy for a hyperdimensional being who already comes from a higher dimension, a higher dimensional consciousness, to discern the consciousness in another being. One of the ways in which I do it is to see whether there is any absence by its conspicuousness of Gaia the girl on the planet. If there's no mention of her, 
no mention of the importance of who she is, then that means the teacher that is in this classroom is not in their state of consciousness. And they see no importance to impart any value of who she is in the conversation. That tells me a lot about whether you're native or whether you come from another system, another star system. Where are you from? Okay, now we get into the pie chart uh, of which Patty puts up in one of her videos. Um, I can't remember which one, but it's one of the reasons why I give her a plug-in with Karen Ann Luke McDonald, who is the clan mother for AB positive bloodline, which is white bear clan. Okay, that's my bloodline. Okay, so I know that the fire that I have in my soul for how hot my light runs, which is to be with the girl and the planet because she's a teacher. That's why as a child, I didn't want to be in their schools. But I didn't have a choice over it because of my parents who believed that these are the schools we're supposed to go to but I was always running to be with her. And that's called an energy niche, which is why I very rarely come into a city because you're experiencing lower density consciousness experiences. So when you want to hang out with a goddess, I prefer to hang out with a goddess. And I want to feel her most powerful energy, which is flowing hot, living magma, right? That's why I was on the big island. Not only did she heal me and take about 20 years off my physical body, but it was like experiencing the higher density consciousness of the cosmos. Because you know that I'm connected to source, she's connected to source, so we're experiencing the most powerful energy. So you know the company that you keep in spirit, because she's a powerful spirit. Those are our teachers. I mentioned in a previous video that I did that I finished about eight minutes ago and I deleted it because there was just too much lower density consciousness that I was experiencing that I realized that I was imparting into that video and I can't do that because that's not who I am. And the reason I picked up the lower density consciousness is because I'm in Sparks, Nevada. Okay? Which means I'm aware of all the data because an empath, for example, that doesn't live in any time clock is going to pick up all the density consciousness data, if you will, or knowledge or experiences that everybody is experiencing here that are in lower density consciousness, which means I'm experiencing it, which means it's in my energy field. And I don't want it in my energy field because it's not what I am. Okay? So, for example, I got off a bus and I stopped by Burger King and they, their doors were all locked, right? And so I noticed that they had signs up about the masks. And you, you, in other words, you can't get anything out of this joint, most of which is toxic to begin with, unless you have a vehicle. So that means that they're segregating that. That's like separating who and who can't uh, get what it is that they serve. And what they serve is mostly toxic, but who they represent as a corporation. Okay? Corporations are parasites right from the gate. So when I look at a guy that's driving through there, for example, and of course this is everywhere that I go, wherever all their corporate franchises are, I realize when you put it in the much larger context that I did, from the time I was a child, doing nothing but collecting data, collecting data, collecting data, collecting data, trying to put together how did this happen? How did I end up in a place in which everything that they do here that is represented by them, not by the girl on the planet, but by them, that is not only holding everybody's minds captive to lower density consciousness, but everything that they do is designed to keep it there. So how do they do that? Easy. Everything that they put on their shelves in their supermarkets. Everything that they push through all their fast food joints. Okay? Everything that they do to the air on the planet. Everything that they do to the ocean on the planet. Everything that they do to all freshwater springs on the planet. Everything that they do to contaminate the soil on this planet. They represent contamination. 
that the spirit thus has to burn all that crap off in order to experience the purity of its own energy. That's why higher dimensional beings got to come in here to try and help as teachers with her, okay, how to get your energy up and burn that crap off. And how do you do that? Run in higher speed waveform. <laughs> burn it off. Which means that's how you get rid of lower density consciousness beings. Because the difference between a fear-based vibration, which is a reptile brain, and a neocortical brain is vast. Okay? For example, if your morning urine pH is 8.4, that means that you're vibrating at 800 megahertz. That's 800 million hertz per second. Okay? That's fast. You're running hot. And that's what's what represented by cool colors. So we can use a Carillion camera, okay, Carillion camera, to take a picture of your auric energy field, and it should be indigo. Wow, blue and purple, okay? Um, that's right. You got to cool your processor down. What is the fastest process that you got to spin more light and fire it that's in your soul to experience all the knowledge that exists within not only this classroom, but every classroom in the Milky Way? Remember, the drill motor. The drill motor. The sum of the knowledge that exists within one galaxy. The sum of the knowledge that exists within another galaxy. The sum of the knowledge that exists through it, all the galaxies. The sum of the knowledge that exists within all superclusters. The sum of the knowledge that exists throughout everything there is. From the inception. Can be experienced through the vortex of our heart. Okay? That's why we have a heart. I lived through my heart. And I knew that when I was a child because all I had to do was read the first newspaper and realize I'm in an energy war. I'm in a density consciousness war between fear-based predators and love-based energy givers. Because when you are in a love vibration, you are naturally giving away energy because you're not holding it captive. They do. So it's easy to know through your state of consciousness what energy is holding you captive and who's draining your battery, which are back to the energetic vampires. They run a lower density consciousness. They are experiencing your higher density consciousness. The difference in the waveform speed of who you are and who they are is vast. So when you're experiencing the energy waveform of communication of who they are, and who you once were 10 seconds before you experienced them, what happened? Now you're experiencing lower density consciousness, which meant the difference between the two you can now calibrate, which is your tack. So now you're able to, to know who they are and who you are, because you know the energy that you run is your identity. So you have to bounce back, kick your tack back up to what is your normal density consciousness, which is through your heart, because that's the most powerful vortex. Right? So I remember in another video, a guy mentioned about the reptile brain and the mammal brain. Well, I simply call it the neo, but it's also the limbic. So what I do as a teacher to connect more dots, to go bang, wow, I get it, is to think about neo and the matrix trilogy. Okay? Remember, Mr. Smith was the programmer. He was the controller. He was controlling the matrix which means everybody that was experiencing who they are was through him, who he is, the programmer. You're experiencing the programmer, which is lower density consciousness, machines, machine learning. So what happened is you have Mr. Smith coming at Neo. How many Mr. Smiths are there? Man, he's cloning himself one right after another. Those are your clones. There's more of us than there is Mr. Smith. Why is that? Because we're more powerful. We came first. Before the machine. Before the Xerox machine. Before the clones came. Before technology came. First sun. First star. First love. Love is the law. That's source. So the neocortical can think in more complex structures. And when you have creative imagination and it's infinite, because the amount of light that is spinning through the vortex 
through everything that you have learned, through the sum of all the knowledge that you have learned over time, you've been kicking out all the data. You're kicking out anything that is less than what you are, which is infinite light, which is infinite creative imagination. That's what I do. When I was a student, I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn as fast as I could. How do I know that? Because I know that I live in an infinite universe. And that means that I want to cover every single bit and byte of data that I got access to. That means I'm learning from everyone that is out there that is a teacher. And we have the ability to do that by spinning the most powerful vortex. Which means you are now experiencing through all the teachers that exist from the first to the last. The sum of all that knowledge. So you're separating the data or the knowledge from what you've already learned from all of your teachers going back to the inception. I was doing that from the moment I came in here. Because I had to figure out how are they programming these beings. Simple. It's just like I told a lady the other day. Give me a blank slate. Give me a black silicon disk. Just like the Perkin Elmer machines. When I worked at a facility where they were making silicon disks and making chips, they were putting in calculators. So a Perkin Elmer machine was running three quarters of a million bucks. What they were doing is putting microcircuits on a silicon disk. Silicon. Okay? The circuits. The data that flows through the circuits. The same way that data flows through our circuits. If they control the data, they control the experience. What prevents them from being able to control what it is we experience? Your vortex. That's why we don't allow them to hold our consciousness captive. To something that is lower in communication than what we are. We're more powerful than they are. And the vortex of our heart is how we do it. So they had to shut that down. So they used implants and all kinds of stuff, okay, in order to target us, if you will, okay, kill off all the clan mothers and the teachers on the planet in order to keep the density of the consciousness on this planet down. And Patty will describe that as a 55 harmonic, which means getting it up, getting it up, getting it up, which means the bandwidth of the perception to which you experience who you are is now higher. Now you're aware of more light. Now you're aware of a higher vibrational state of consciousness. Now you're with us. Now you're free to be who you are. Because now you're running at a minimum a love vibration. And what does that do? That frees you from captivity of something that is lower than what you are in waveform vibration. So when you think of that as fear, which is 100 megahertz versus 800, that's a vast difference in what's called bandwidth perception. Now you're perceiving the universe that you live in and a higher waveform communication between it and you in a bidirectional mirror. So now when you're projecting something that is higher in speed, which is 800 megahertz, then you're experiencing what you are projecting that is coming back to you, which means you're getting more of the energy of what you are. It's like an echo chamber. That's the genius of the cosmos. You're learning. You're learning how light works. You're learning how speed works. You're learning how the waveform speed of what you're experiencing works. You're attracting more of what you are because you're choosing to go to a higher realm. And that's how you do it, is to increase the speed of what you're experiencing. So before I end this particular episode, before I run out of time, um, there was a few things that I'm just going to just run through very fast. Um, love is fearless, Absolutely. Because you're not running a fear vibration at 100 megahertz. Instead, you're running 500, 800. Now you're free to be who you are. That's higher density consciousness. Okay? This is sort of a nursery school. It's basic spiritual science. I thought I'd show you this. Okay? You see where it says single geometric point? And then I drew sort of like what a top is. Remember the twilight zone? It spins just like a galaxy spins. Okay? So I put down here, how do I learn the sum of knowledge that exists within that galaxy that is spinning a vortex? By being aware through my vortex of all the knowledge that is being learned through everybody that is learning in each one of those classrooms. 
which means I have access to every single one of those classrooms. I have access to all the light that exists within the Milky Way galaxy. And since my heart is source connected, it means I have the ability to learn everything from everybody there is to learn from that exists between source, which is the inception, until a single moment in time that just happened. So the difference between that and now has been coursework, which means we don't need to relearn something that we already did because whatever we just learned has value. So what happens is you're kicking out data, you're kicking out knowledge that doesn't work for you, which means it doesn't serve you. So you begin to realize what serves us best, what doesn't serve us best. And how do we measure that? Vibration. Okay? So when you're reaching the highest vibration that you can in this realm, that means you learn what you need to learn while you were here, which is why love and service to others means you're attracting more of what you are. Now you're an energy giver. Now you're a lighthouse. Everybody should have learned through the teacher in the classroom how to become more powerful in spirit to be a lighthouse. Someday you can be a son. Someday you can have a classroom of your own. And big is, big is powerful in the amount of energy that she provides for everybody that is in here. Imagine being that someday. So it means you learn through her how she did it. She's showing you how she did it by being an example of a teacher. So that's what I try and do. Share the experience of what I learned through her and all my teachers, which is the sum of our coursework. So I wanted to leave a few important resources. Uh, I don't have time to go into Salmiac right now. But they, they want to keep everyone in a lower vibration bandwidth perception so they don't lose you. And the reason they don't want to lose you is so they can feed on you. Okay, so I've always said this. Why are you all feeding parasites? What's the matter here? Because they haven't learned yet. But the problem here is, and this is what's so painful for me, like class was dismissed in 2013. Okay? So I was thinking when I was talking to Patty, how many graduates did we get out of here? So this is why when I come on here, uh, and I'm just using a cell phone, it's because I'm getting ready to move, okay? I, I realize my time's running out, okay? So I don't have a whole lot of time to share what I've learned through the time that I've been here and everything else I've learned since the inception of who I am, okay? So I simply share what I've learned to become what it is that I am in a higher vibrational density consciousness because I go home, okay? The teachers go home. And that's why they killed off all the teachers here. So that's why, you know, when you think of yourself as a student just starting out as a newborn, who are you learning from? Because your children represent the future of humanity. Who do you want your children to learn from? Parasites? Because they'll simply mimic what that is. Because that's what children do. If you're learning from a parasite, you become what that is. Unless you knew better. I was fortunate enough when I was a child to know better. By the time I was five years of age, my circuits were up and running. My density consciousness was already beyond what this is. Okay? That makes it easy for us to know who we are and who we're not. That's not true for most of the people on the planet, unfortunately. And that's painful. Because that means now we're experiencing in waveform communication something that is less than what we are in vibration. That's painful. Because it means that they're not running a love vibration. So we have to put in the causation. Why is that? That's why I had to figure out how they were programming them. Trauma. All drug addiction, all alcoholism starts with trauma. Looking for an escape hatch. Trying to get away from a predator. Something that's trying to feed on your energy and hold you captive. That's what it is. Those are your corporations. That's fascism. Those are your Nazis. But Nazis aren't the only ones that are here. You got Draco here. Those are reptiles. Those are fear-based predators. Okay? So they got... Think of it this way. You're an energy slave. That's the only, that's the only thing that they perceive you as. It's just a resource. Food. Your soul to them is food. Okay? 
So the easiest way to escape something like that is to get higher in vibration. Which means they can't perceive you anymore. Because they operate on a lower vibrational scale than we do. So we're in a higher realm, they're in a lower realm. That's why they're second law. Corpus juris secundrum. They represent corporations. They represent a parasite. We represent the energy givers. That's why we're first law Indians. They're parasites through the corporations. So that's why the reason that the timelines are shifting, or shall I say, there really is only one timeline, okay, which is source. So the way that it works is that you, get, you are given a certain amount of time in which to learn how energy works, how light works, how to become more of what you are. And when you're learning through a goddess on a planet as a teacher, then you're learning how it works, which means you're learning how to be a lighthouse. And if you didn't learn how to be a lighthouse within a given amount of time, bye. And just like I've said to many people, they came in and wrecked the classroom. Okay? So that's why we're given... If you will, tutoring after school, even though school's already been dismissed, we're trying to provide as much information to as many people as we can so they can begin to realize the truth because it's all about vibration. It's the speed of the waveform. How fast are you traveling through the cosmos? Because energy is always moving. And in this galaxy, you're given a certain amount of time to graduate. And if you didn't get up to be a lighthouse to where you're giving away energy, instead of feeding on energy off others, you didn't graduate. You know, and that is the, un and, and as sad as and painful it is for me to say that, I know that to be the truth. <laughs> because otherwise you end up with what? More parasites.